What's going to happen next year that could result in this being the last election? Well, here's the 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 premise of it. Like the 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 thing that it moves towards is the process in the Constitution <clears throat> called the contingent election, right? Oh yeah. So what 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 happens? This is this has happened twice before, 1824, and then in a vice presidential candidate in 1828. Um, if no one hits the threshold of 270 electoral college votes, what then happens is that it goes to, and for, by January 6th, right, for whatever reason, um, whoever, uh, what happens is it goes to the House, and each House has a state delegation that gives gets one vote for president. So the Republicans would win every time, right? Like, because they just... You know, Wyoming. I, they, right, they, they, think, have, they have more house. It, it, it hasn't. We'll, we'll yeah, there's there's different numbers on it, but I mean, it's overwhelmingly in favor of the Republicans. Um, so this means that by this method, there's also a separate method for uh, picking the vice president through the Senate, which would you could have a Republican president and a Democrat vice president, which would be, I mean, hilarious. But um, but you would have uh, like you would have. So it would goes to the House Republican. It, it goes to the House delegates. They each get a vote, and so you have an election which is constitutional, but which does not reflect either the popular vote or the electoral college vote, right? And so what you need for that to happen is a third party candidate with who takes a significant amount away. RFK. I mean, some of the numbers they're showing are pretty like what's in here. Right. Um, and if that happens, it, it's quite possible that no one yep. at all would reach 270. If you throw into that election denial and you and faithless electors, which has happened in American history, um, you get an election where th the point is that no, it, it would be constitutional, but illegitimate, i.e. exactly like elections that you mentioned in North Korea or East Germany or whatever. There's been a big conversation around, uh, you know, last last night a podcast comes out. Tucker Carlson says he thinks RFK Jr. pulls votes from Trump. <clears throat> However, I think that's that's probably not correct based on the conversations we've had. And I think there's, you know, like 10 polls and seven of them show the inverse, actually, with with RFK Jr. Biden actually sinks a little bit more than Trump. But regardless, it of doesn't that, matter. Exactly. My point is yeah. this. When we talk about that, the one thing left out is. All that really matters is RFK Jr. wins maybe one small state or exactly. something. Or, or you know, even gets, like if he's in Maine and he gets some of the vo the electoral college votes there, that could tip it splits. the- It splits. Like, it, yeah. you know, this is a fine game, right? That you guys have been playing with your elections since 2000, right? Yeah. Like all it takes is like a tiny little flick to so really prevent that from happening. I think Nebraska- Famously has yeah. the the split with like the urban and the rural area. Yes. So I it, actually myself can't keep track of them. Like I tried for the book. I was like, I'll have a map, and I was like, it's insane. It's this patchwork well, 18th century system. It, 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 like what? Where, it, it, keeping track of it, even for someone who's like, I'm going to keep track of it for three months. Very hard. The, I think most states are winner take all. Yes, well, almost all. Almost all of them. Yeah. But if RFK wins even a handful of electors and then neither Trump nor Biden or whoever, I, I don't think it's going to be Biden. It's got to be somebody else. But if they don't reach 270, then it goes to the delegations like you explained. Yeah. I couldn't find the number, but there are more Republican states than Democrat states, which which would result in the it, Republican candidate winning. It goes back and forth, but there's just an overwhelming like preponderance, the likelihood of it being yeah. Republican is is much higher. And so uh, we had uh, Jen Uger on last week, and I believe he's incorrect in his broader view of this, but the, the general idea he said was the plan for 2020 was to, with January 6th, was to disrupt the electoral vote count, which would, and, and Mike Pence first, Mike Pence would say, I'm not going to accept these. They got to go back to the state legislatures. Right. That would result in a contingent election. If that doesn't happen, and that he believed that January 6th's purpose was to disrupt the count ent entirely so that they would then say, well, it's got to go to a contingent election. Right. I don't I don't think there was a plan uh, at, at at least any high level. So I don't agree with Jenk on that. I don't think they knew what a contingent election was. I, God, right. No, not at all. I mean, it's 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 right. I think a lot of these people were just I mean, if you look, they at were the, winging it like. And on a wing and a, some insane demand that they were I, like, what the hell are we supposed to do? I yeah. mean, that it was, you know. There, there's one guy who's going to jail now for uh, uh, like two years or whatever. And he's on video being like, we did it. We're in the building. Ha ha. And it's like, what what does that mean? Yeah, like, what is what it is, is we did it? In, in, in the 1600s, perhaps occupying a building meant you were now yes. in charge. But that doesn't mean anything today. Yeah. Um, but if Mike Pence did say, 
I think I think it was like even one state. If he said the state re legislature of this state has disputed their election and it is currently in litigation, I will not count these votes. Trump would have won. Well, I think it might have been two states. Well, technically, I think it'd be a little harder because the contingent election has to take place on the sixth. Right. Like the, the, the electoral count, the, the college vote has already had already happened. Right. So like if there if so like I see what you're saying right like the the January sixth is just the certification right like they disrupted the certification he would have had to have done it prior exactly so like on January sixth if he had done that it wouldn't have made any difference because the yeah. certificate legally because the certification has already happened so if the decertification does not arrive for any reason by January sixth then it goes into a contingent election but it has to take place on that date yeah right the U S the U S electoral system is in, <clears throat> is both chaotic and incredibly specific right 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 like so it's well you know it's not like they can in canada if something happens like this you just have another election in, in I, four weeks and that's it right i mean you, but you can't you, you have no mechanism for doing that I, an interesting point was brought up i think it was ian uh, last night on timcast irl said we don't need to rush elections and it's like he's he's right <clears throat> like if there's an issue i don't see a problem with being like okay hold on guys this one's going to take a little bit longer to figure out. Let's just chill, and then we'll we'll, we'll litigate. Particularly, Everything here is like, no, it must be this day. It must be done, or else. It's Particularly the, national elections. The, the U.S. Constitution is a seriously problematic document, right? The Constitution? It, it, of course it is. Intentionally. Well, well right. <laughs> well, I mean, look, it's a work of great genius, but it's a work of 18th century genius. And we're living in the 21st century, and it doesn't. I agree. I, and like, the, the, like this part See, of this part of this problem is the edge of it the, right? the resistance not to be, you know, just to be clear like u.s constitution is a work of genius like i'm not no i, I think you're completely right uh, but it's just it's just an antiquity the per, the per, the pushback that you that you are going to get from people that are that believe in the constitution or that are that favor the constitutional system is, is not so much that there are not things that could be better in the constitution it's that if you allow someone to try to change it they're going to change it in a way that takes power away from the states and central and that the whole point of the constitution is not to centralize power but the con I, I would say the issue is the constitution can be amended and so yeah. it, jefferson it, said if you if a constitution lasts longer than 19 years it's a contract with the dead wow right he said yeah. like if you, you need to change it every 20 years so yeah. the, like canadian constitution was written in 1982 we could all read it in this room and know exactly what it means the argument, right? yeah. the argument was because the people that signed the Constitution have passed away. They're no longer in power. So that means that the people that exist now didn't have any say in it. So you can't say that it's a contract with the people because the people mm -hmm. that exist today ha had never had a say in the Constitution. And there's there's validity to that ar that argument. Yeah. You, you're, you're you're in the you're living with ghosts now. Great ghosts, right? Like like some of the greatest geniuses that have ever lived. But it's still ghosts. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. And, and like I, I, and this, this extremely, this jalopy of an electoral system, like this, like patched together, it, like it is very vulnerable. Like Absolutely. It, it, it could. It, I mean, it could break down. Like I don't know if it's twenty twenty four, but I mean, uh -huh. all signs point to like a lot of weakness. It's it's I, coming. I got bad news for you, yeah. Stephen. Um, your book, The Last Election. Yeah. Yeah, you got it wrong. The last election was was twenty twenty or two thousand. Or exactly, and that was the point I was going to make. Mm. We've had this, we've had this discussion, and uh, it's is the last election twenty twenty four, or are we already at the point where with twenty twenty the dispute? Well, hold on, there was also challenges to the twenty sixteen election. Well, hold on, two thousand was determined by the Supreme Court, and I, I'm a little kid for that. But the point is, at a, at a certain point, I mean, to be fair, you could argue since eighteen seventy six. Yes, a council determined who was going to be president because there was a dispute. Yeah, we, we've we've long had these disputes and then the machine gets mechanized. But I think in, 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 in fairness to what we're actually trying to argue, the contemporary issue in 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton lost. Yeah. Donald Trump wins. And for the next several years, they accused Trump of being a, a Russian spy or a Russian agent or having colluded in some way with Russia. Not my president. Not my president. Yeah. Uh, and it, it resulted in hobbling the Trump administration in certain ways. He couldn't fire certain well, people. Well, they hobbled themselves fair, well enough. I, 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 I think it's I mean, fair to say- I mean, they didn't fill one third of state, can, state Two state things departments. can be true at yeah, the same time. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Fair two enough. things yeah. can be like, true I'm not going to disagree time. with that, but yeah. he was hobbled by, uh, could, he, could he fire Comey and could he change things that a president should normally change? He wasn't able to do it. There were a bunch of other issues too. He was hobbled in a lot of crazy ways when he tried withdrawing troops from Syria. 
his, his advisors, the, the, the commanders lied about the troop presence, lied to the American people, kept. That's insane to me. And, and so if we're talking about the last election or whether or not we're in a civil war, we need to consider the context from 2016 onward and probably before, like you mentioned, 2000. Well, I, I think the context from like elite institutional forms, like every, see, it's so funny coming from another country because like in every other country in the world, there's a civil service that is, has, has the power. Right. And the politicians come and they run the country. The politicians come in, they can change the civil service, but it's like steering a massive ship. Right. And, it, in a, you know, I remember the reason I wrote the next civil war, honestly, is because I was in Washington for the 2016 inauguration and a journalist calls me at like two in the morning and says like, hey, come to this party in Georgetown. And I, it, I you know, I was like, okay. So like I go out to this guy's house and it was some like low level bureaucrat from FDA or Department of Agriculture. Like, you know, the kind of guy who's like responsible for the price of wheat in 2080. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, 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 like plan, the, the like analysis annoying of like, type of bureaucrat. Yeah, like, like, a, like the most innocuous. Well, yeah. And keep us alive. Like yeah. very annoying, but keep us alive. And he taken his chair and he had all the presidential pictures, like the big presidential thing. And I said, what happened? And he said, no one came to replace us wow. at the FDA. Like they turned out the lights at the FDA. That's when I knew like all the other stuff, like the American carnage speech, all that stuff. That's when I knew America's in trouble. Like, let's start to think about the deep structures of this because like you can get go without politicians, but without a bureaucracy, without a civil service, you're like, things fall apart very quickly. Right. But my <clears throat> point is with the electoral stuff, um, the problem is that no one believes that a legitimate election has happened. So from 2016? It's, from, from 2016, probably, I think 2016 is really the marker yeah. where it's like, they don't actually, like 20, 20, 2000, it's like, well, there was some play and it didn't like, but on the other hand, it's like, you know, this, that, like we, we understand that sometimes mistakes happen, popular yeah. vote, but 2016 people were like, this was illegitimate. I think 2020, the the right i mean still they still believe it's illegitimate considering considering barack obama was clearly the winner in 2008 and 2012 like clearly yeah. america yeah. was generally like this the center and and the left were yeah. very unified very very pro Correct. obama so yeah. i think that that because of that 2016 is probably the most the, is it's is probably more accurate to say 2016 was when and, when it really fell apart but yeah. so here here's a point i wanted to make 2016 election in dispute Donald Trump, as the commander in chief of the armed force of the United States, wants our presence in Syria reduced. Yeah, the, his, his the people beneath him who are who are instructed as per our constitution and the laws of this land lied to him to keep troops in a foreign country and lied to the American public. But that's some kind of coup. Well, when 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 to his, me, there's it's perfectly natural that there'd be a tension between an executive and the people following it out. I mean, that just to me is like, that's life. Like, every, yeah, like yeah, certainly, look, look. certainly that like people, like Wait, whoever is the leader of Germany, what he thinks about all day is why won't these people do what I'm telling them yes, to do? Yes, but the president of the United States is elected by the people to be the commander in chief of yeah. the armed forces. And we never declared war in Syria. 